been a rough couple of days for the Pac-12. Yeah. Uh, just recently, uh, as we were heading to our last break, I should say the break before last, uh, Memphis's AD uh, was holding a press conference, and, um, well, he he may have added the people's elbow to the uh Everybody else currently kicking the crap out of the Pac-12 and what they're doing and or not doing. Yeah, Memphis AD Ed Scott did not hold back, and uh, he, this was to a message for the fans, right? Because I think we need to give a little background on on what's going on with all these schools around the country that have either rebuffed the Pac-12 or like UNLV, where there is a a section of their fan base that was pretty upset that they didn't jump on the opportunity to go to the Pac-12 and instead opted to stay in the Mountain West for 25 to $30 million. And it is because of, I mean, for UNLV, it's leverage in knowing you have a place to go. No matter, full stop. Like, if the Mountain West survives, you get an, a, a lion's share of, of the money that that conference will generate moving forward. That's a good thing for you. If you are and you, the Pac-12 is never going to get Power Five status again, the Power Conference status is gone yeah. for the Pac-12. Uh, that, that seat at the table, they they took that chair and they put it in the wood chipper. Because the autonomous four are now the Big Ten, SEC, ACC, and Big Twelve. Mm-hmm. That's not going to change unless the ACC dissolves, and then all of a sudden the Big Ten, Big Twelve, and SEC. Get more powerful. This is the this is the power vacuum we're talking about. And who's going to soak up that space? And it's always going to be them. Yeah. So the UNLV is going oh, fine. We'll be the king of the kids' table then, mm-hmm. and we're going to go ahead and we'll f- we'll stay in the mountain. We'll, we'll find the biggest kids' table, and basically. we'll get more money than anybody yeah. else instead of sharing it equally. Memphis in their fan base, like, why wouldn't you do this? Because it's more money than you'd be getting from the American Athletic Conference. And so he's having to step forward and say, well, let's let's pump the brakes on whether or not this is actually a good deal or not for us. A lot of folks and some of you in the media candidly want us to go to be great. And sometimes you got to be great to go. Right. And so when I hear people say, I'm not going to buy tickets, I'm not going to support the programs. You're not really hurting me. You're hurting the student athletes, right? And you're hurting the people that are on the field playing. And that's really, really important for me. So where does this go? Uh, if y'all haven't seen the latest reports of what's going on between the Mountain West and the Pac-6, 7 right now, um, this is a fluid situation, right? So that's the other thing. When we talk about the decision that was made by the University of Memphis to not join the Pac, as I like to call them right now at this time, um, that was not a binary decision. That was not a no, we're not ever going anywhere. That was based on the offer that was presented in front of us, that we're not taking that offer because we don't think less of ourselves. And and I came here for a reason. You heard me in the press conference. You've heard me in any interview I've done. I'm bullish on Memphis's future. And so I think sometimes we get enamored by the new and we want to take a bad deal. And that deal was not a good deal for the University of Memphis. It certainly wasn't a good deal for our athletic department. And most importantly, it was a really, really bad deal for our Olympic sport. Wow. So, yeah. number one, he said it was a bad deal, which means I would I would imagine he's talking about financially. Yep. Uh, that last line, it being a bad deal for their Olympic sports. That's exactly what I said. It didn't make sense about Memphis and Tulane in the first place. A lot of travel. Because they would have to be coming out to the West Coast all the time. All the time. They'd, have, mean, they'd have one trip that was close between each other. That's it. It did. It didn't. It never made sense. No, this is Cal Stanford in the ACC <laughs> yeah. it, with significantly less money. Yeah, I mean, it, it just did not. It it didn't cal- calculate. It didn't compute. And you heard him right there say it was a bad deal. I mean, he just said it's a bad deal. It's not worth it to take a n- nominal gain in your finances if you're Memphis, and say. We're gonna tr- we're gonna go ahead and have all day. of our our sports play this. It just doesn't make sense. And this is also Memphis signaling that maybe the Pac-12 isn't the only conference that's kicking the tires on them. You know, maybe the Big 12 is. Maybe the ACC, which is easier travel for Memphis than coming out west, is exploring them as an opportunity if they lose their lawsuits as well to Florida State and Clemson, and they need to backfill their universities. They would do it. 
with Memphis because there's a reason why the Pac-12 was was bullish on Memphis is because they knew it was the biggest brand of the ones that are remaining. Mm-hmm. And so you go and you try to say, all right, well, shoot, instead of taking a seat at the Pac-12's table, which is a non-power conference, maybe we take a seat at the ACC's, which if they only lose Clemson and Florida State, mm-hmm. doubtful. But if they only lose, they still keep their power status because they would have North Carolina, Duke, Virginia, mm-hmm. Miami still on board. So I also, again, doubtful that that would happen. But, but you, at the again, same token, it's the same thing that UNLV is doing, which is there's no reason for you to go anywhere. You're wanted by multiple parties. Post up and chill and take the best possible deal. Every other school in that conference in the ACC would not be taken by the Big Ten or the SEC. No. And so if you're going to have a lesser value than what the Big Ten and the SEC are getting, well, in the Big 12, well, then you go and you join the ACC where it's more regionalized and it's closer to you, and you still would get the bump that you're not getting from the American. That all kind of makes sense. It all kind of makes sense, Mm -hmm. and it's why Memphis didn't jump to the pack. And the shot that he took at, have you all seen what's going on between the Mountain West and the pack? Mm-hmm. That's not a good spot. That it, He started that mm-hmm. with, like, it, it felt like it was, like, they didn't give us any reason no. to be going. No. Whatsoever. Which, again. This is the, the big confusion about holy why. Holy crap, Pac-12. Which is, why did you announce that you were taking those four schools when you did, if you didn't have the others lined up and lock, not just lined up, but signed, sealed and delivered, keep it quiet, move in the shadows, then pounce. Like every other conference that has survived has done like the big 10 did to the PAC 12, like the big 12 did to the PAC 12. Where you had, you had schools in your own conference who were like, no, 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 we're committed. Meanwhile, they were already committed somewhere else. Yeah, the, this is Game of Thrones, and you know what the Pac-12 is? It's the Stark family. Oh, yeah, just belligerent of what's actually going on. They kind of yeah. win at the end, though. Do they? I feel like everyone loses in the end. Well, Bran gets to be king. <laughs> oh boy! Yeah, here but we he's go. Crippled. Here he's we go. He's a Stark. Oh boy! So now Washington State or Oregon State wins a championship, but they're in a seven-team league. Yeah, same thing. Life imitates art. Mm. <laughs> and they're crippled. Who's uh, the zombie? Uh, oh, all right. And, all right. And I'm not going. Tree. I'm not going. Uh, one thing I do know is that the Big Ten and the SEC are Thanos. And they go. just said. They just snapped their fingers and said, see ya. Half of you dead. There you go. I like it.